Patty Smythe of Scandal, who had a lot of big hits in the 80s, next on Professor Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. We interview the great artists of the rock and roll era, and you just never know what you're gonna see from day to day on this channel. So make sure that you subscribe right now below so you never miss out, click the bell, and you won't. Now I'm excited to bring you yet another episode of our series, Revelations. That's of course where featured artists go deep on their greatest songs. Patti Smythe tells us about the new wave classic, Goodbye to You. Patti also tells us about her latest album, It's About Time, it's really great. You'll wanna check that out. As we go into this interview, I wanna thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear, my favorite frames ever. Go design your own pair with digital blue light protection at zenny.com. Here's the story on Revelations. Goodbye to you. Didn't break the top 40, but it's a new wave classic. Goodbye to you. Goodbye to you. It's just one of those songs that everybody knows. That's the funny thing about chart positions 20 or 30 years later. Nobody cares really 30 years later if it hit the top 10 or top five, if it's a song that has just lasted. Right. One of the interesting facts about uh, Goodbye to You is the amazing synthesizer soul in the song. It was actually recorded by Paul Schaefer. Yes, he was in Scandal. He was an original, he was an originating member of Scandal because Zach used, you know, he got all these studio musicians. Davy Johnson was in our band. Tonight is his 3,000th show with me. I mean, played on those first demos before, you know, that I put my vocal down on, had like, you know, half of Elton John's band and Paul Schaefer was saying, and Paul Schaefer did some live gigs with us. And right around that time that we got signed, he got David Letterman. This is Paul Schaefer over here, ladies and gentlemen. So we had to get a keyboard player, but he always loved that Del Shannon kind of thing. He put that crazy solo on it. And it was a very hard song to cut. I'm not really sure why, but we cut that basic track, just bass, drums, and me. Like the guitar, we couldn't figure out. Zach wasn't able to play it. I think maybe Keith played it. I don't even remember who, who wound up playing the, the da, 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 da. But I remember having to sing the basic tracks with bass and drums, which is really hard to do because you're singing to bass, you know? I mean, and I sort of remember struggling to get it just right with Vinnie Poncia as far as the track. And then just sort of, you know, singing the shit out of it and, you know, having fun and feeling like this was, you know, our, our single, it was gonna be our single. But what was interesting is it was right around the time that MTV came out. And I'll tell you what, I did a month long promo tour with Zach going from radio station to radio station. So this was probably 82, right? Uh, it must, I think it was the autumn because I remember being down in Florida and it, you know, I went with these great promotion guys from Columbia, old school, hilarious promotion guys. Every single per, uh, you know, director of whatever the guy is at the radio stations, Every single uh, radio director said, we already have a chick this week. We're not going to add your record because we've got Pat Benatar or we have Chrissy Hind or we have uh, whoever it was. There were only four, for Christ's sake. You know, there weren't that many. But it, but, but it didn't matter. If, there was, if another woman had a record out or it, was, it could have been Linda Ronstein because she, was, she had done that, you know, that, that sort of uh, punk pseudo punk record that that cool record that you did I, I have a lot of respect for Linda Ronson after seeing that um, documentary because I was like wow that chick brought it and every time she brought it and changed her direction she killed it which was great we weren't getting added at radio stations because they already were playing another woman that was it another chick and if not for MTV and us going in and making that $600 video, because we did basically what we did with Line on You with Goodbye to You. And Zach's wife, you know, got me that red dress and styled me. It was MTV that made that song an iconic hit for sure, because that was in heavy rotation. 
on, on MTV for, for quite a, a while. And one of, and you know, like one of the early, probably early MTV hits. Thank God for them though, if they're, you know, I mean, video has been a kiss and a punch for music, but for us as a band, you know, and I also was very comfortable in front of the camera, which was just luck, you know, because, you know, you can be a really great artist or a good singer or whatever, but not, but be very uncomfortable in front of a camera. And for me, it was just like, you know, I don't know why, but turn on the camera and I'm a total ham sandwich, you know, that that's just luck. That's just dumb luck. That's the kind of kid I was, you know, like, look at me. So I, it didn't intimidate me, which was good. And that's, I think that's how, so I, we owe a lot to MTV and, and to VH1 for sure. Well, goodbye to you. Your vocal on that, like you said, it's just full throttle. I mean, that's what people just love about it because it's one of those songs <laughs> that a lot of people have had that experience where they go through a breakup or they have this horrible thing that happens and that's their song. That's their jam. They turn it on and sing it to the top of their lungs. I remember my oldest sister went through a breakup. <laughs> I remember her playing that song. It's the divorce song. How many letters I got? I left the record playing on repeat, you know? Um, yeah, I'll say I, I haven't written a wedding song yet, but I, 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 I've got a lot of divorce songs under my belt <laughs> or breakup songs. No wedding songs yet. <laughs> maybe drive. Maybe drive will be a wedding song. It's not. It's not that sad. <laughs> Goodbye to you. It's and it's just so iconic, and like you said, the music video. Goodbye to you. What's interesting is all these years later, Goodbye to You is actually bigger on YouTube than The Warrior. Funny, right? Even though The Warrior was was a bigger hit. Yeah, I know. It's weird because. I wonder why that is. I mean, you know, The Warrior was like top 20 video of 84 and... BMI award. I think it's because there's, you know, the thing about Goodbye... I mean, Goodbye to You to me is a better video, you know? And also, we're just so happy, you know? We're just jumping around and I really am laughing because I got lipstick on the bass player's nose. Like, I got so close to him while I was singing that I got lipstick on his face. And that made me laugh and we kept rolling and it, you know, it was just sort of like a joyful thing. The, the warrior came out a little heavier than I thought. I thought that was gonna be more of a tongue in cheek. What's so weird is the guy who's in it, you know, just reached out to my manager, sent an email to me like all these years later. You know, I don't know what he does. I, I can't remember exactly like a professor or something. I tried to get them to stop, like, please, you know, just let me do a performance video. But of course I was a woman and it was like, you know, the new, the, the new uh, area of the music company was video. So they came up with this high concept and I mean, I'm barely recognizable in that video. I think that's why people like Goodbye to You more, I feel like. I feel like, you know, you can see me in it and I'm in it a lot. I'm not in The Warrior that much. I think that saved my career that I wasn't in it a lot. <laughs> I co-starred in it along with all those creatures. I mean, a lot of the stuff was pretty incredible. The makeup and the costumes. Just not mine. <laughs> it's like, it would have been nice if she had made me a beautiful creature instead of like a bat or whatever the hell I was. <laughs> the warrior. The warrior. Well, how did Paul Schaefer get recruited for that signature part of the song? I think it was Zach. I'm telling you, Zach just, you know, found all the studio musicians. And Paul Schaefer, of course, was playing with everybody probably at that point. He's such a, he's such a, a, a genuine, not only an encyclopedia of music, but a, but a, but a lover of music. And I, I just think he, you know, he was just playing all the time. And somehow, I don't know how he and Zach met, maybe through Hugh McCracken, who was a studio player also. <music> who was friends with Zach. So I think that's how they met. Because they, that, that, that stuff was cut. A lot of it was cut before I met Zach. Uh, we got, you know, Paul 
luckily he played on the record with us, but he was on the demos before I was even involved. So I'm not really sure how they met. I don't even remember how I met Paul because I think I already knew Paul before then. But, you know, it was a smaller music scene then. Musicians knew each other, yeah. You said that Zach had brought you in and showed you pieces of songs that weren't quite finished. What do you remember about when he showed you this? The truth is, is this story because the song wasn't finished and I finished the song and it was the first song that I, you know, that I had written. I didn't know about songwriting and he took all the credit for the song and it wasn't finished. It wasn't even a song. There's no demo of it. There was a there was a track of the d -d 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 -d. I remember that, and that he had the title "Goodbye to You," but it was it wasn't a finished song because we hadn't recorded it, and we went back into his room of ideas to try to find the single, and so that's what I remember. I remember hearing a, a piece of it and finishing it, and not knowing that that was songwriting. <laughs> so you know, and he didn't bother to tell me that either so and there was another woman's name on the song I, I remember that too he wrote that I believe it started he started with Kathy Green who wrote he wrote some other songs with and it wound up that only his name was on it and I might be remembering that wrong but I sort of remember seeing her name and his name there were some lyrics but it just it wasn't done it, it wasn't finished it was you know one of those songs that they had sort of abandoned and I came in and finished it and when that happens you know that means that you wrote it with them but that's kind of not how it it's okay everything's turned out all right but uh i by the time i figured that out it was i was like oh forget it you know when you recorded it and recorded that amazing vocal to you. To you. was there something that you were going through or somebody you were thinking of when you're no no i mean so i i had a guy this is a funny anything he was a musician or whatever and we had almost a fling not really but he literally came over to me at like i want to say it was like a live aid or something and was like oh you know was that song did that i'm like no you know and to me i'm like no are you kidding i'm like not even close but you know to me goodbye to you was just it was a it was a fun song i was very happy to sing that song i wasn't angry at all it was just like you know, those times and then goodbye to you. It's like, it was sort of fun. I wasn't really angry, but I, I definitely had attitude because, you know, that's what I bring a little bit of attitude, I guess. And so I, you know, I knew it, it kind of, you know, you, I just had to tell the story and, and tell it. I mean, it was a kiss off song, but I wasn't angry at all. As a matter of fact, I, I, I had a good time singing it and recording it. So, and I, and I still like to sing it live. So no, there wasn't anyone in my life which sometimes love just ain't enough. There's a in love in somebody too much. There were a few people that were mixed up in that song, but with Goodbye to You, it was like, no, I just was like, this is fun, you know, let's just, you know, I can say goodbye to you to someone, but I certainly wasn't thinking of anyone specifically, no. Well, do you remember the first time that you heard it on the radio? I always like to ask that question of musicians. Yes, I do. Tell me about that experience. I was in my funky apartment in the East Village. I lived in a, on the top floor of a little four story brownstone. Um, it was a, what you would call a cold water flat. My toilet was, you know, a closet in the kitchen and my shower was a closet in the bedroom. And I loved that apartment. It was on East Fifth Street. And I used to listen to WNEW. And we'll be back with tomorrow's best rock today right here at NEWFM. You know, that was my, sta my station, my rock station. And I must have been like, it was during the day. And I remember the sun coming in the windows. I really loved that apartment. And, uh, and all of a sudden, they just, I heard the beginnings of the song. You know, I don't think they introduced it. They just started it and they back in, you know, said who it was. And I just remember like just losing my mind and jumping all around my apartment and dancing all around. I just could not believe that we were on the radio. It was really, you know, like uh, otherworldly. It really was. It was like, wow, you know, like this is, it's happening. I, I, it was hard to wrap my head around it. And isn't it strange the generation gap now with the internet and social media and everything the way it is? I don't think that younger people quite understand what that means to our generation and generation before us and so on and so forth because the radio was so huge. It was, and when I asked that question of anybody pre-2000, 
it's a big deal. It was such a big thing. It's kind of sad in a way because even now, like, you know, because I put this new record out, it's about time. And, you know, like I, they were showing me like the streams and the listens and, you know, I don't really understand how people are finding their music. Like I was saying before, it's not like we could just tune into a radio station and, and you would hear the new Pretenders record and you'd hear Clash and you'd hear whatever, you know, it's like, so it's, it's interesting. My nephew manages some acts. He's got a, uh, he's got a, a rapper kid season is his name and he's doing really well, but it's all online and Instagram and they're getting like unbelievable streams and all that stuff. But there isn't this sort of like, it's just steady as they go. And, and he's known where he's known, but you know what I mean? It, and I wonder how many of those people there are. And then how do they get up into that upper? It's, it's a, it's a, it's a whole other ball game now, but no, I don't think that they'll, I mean, maybe you get the, you get to hear yourself on Spotify or Pandora at someone's house and that's cool, but it's nothing like the radio was God, you know, it was like, that was just, you know, what you wanted was to, was to be on the radio to, to, to think, you know, that because I love music so much and I listened to so much music as a kid and I was, you know, listened to radio stations or played my, my, my records or whatever it was, but to, to, to actually have heard myself coming out of that radio, like, I don't remember anything. And I remember that quite clearly, you know, that's me on the radio. So that was pretty awesome. And then MTV for the video to be on MTV. And then also later making progress through pop culture later on was on Beavis and Butthead. I remember that. <laughs> With Dan Henley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see that? They called him Dan Henley or something. Yeah, it was funny. And then Jimmy Fallon. Goodbye to you. Hey, Goodbye to you. Yeah, that was funny. That was, you know, we were, that was sort of like a last minute thing. I had gone down to Nashville where I, I, I made the record in Nashville, you know, trying to do anything with the pandemic right now. I mean, I, I really have to say I'm, so many of my musician friends are struggling right now, and this is just such a hard time for everyone. And it and it, it it's just hard to get stuff done. But somehow in Nashville, they're continuing. You know, they're such a machine. They're such a good business machine that things are still just, you know, you can just figure it out. So the guy who produced the record with Dan Huff, Ilya Tuzinski, I called him and I, I go, I needed, he, I knew he knew the songs. I knew that the guys who played on my band knew the songs. Like, cause you know, how do I go in and rehearse somebody for two days? Because I needed live versions of two of my songs for Jimmy and two songs for Rachel Ray, I think. Let's go back in time, let's try. Like, you know, two classics and then two new ones. Well, and it's really weird. Let me just say, to do a live performance is great. To go into the studio is great to try to do both at the same time with no audience is strange, you know? So I, I was having to perform for, so it was kind of like making a music video, only it's really you singing. It's not lip singing. You're, you know, you're singing live and playing live. So I went down to Nashville and I cut these four tracks. We worked for five hours straight. I must have sang them 60 times and I'm not kidding because I, you know, I was teaching it to the guys and we were trying to figure out you know, it was like nine and, and because they all do all their day sessions, we didn't start till like nine thirty. So I think we went from like nine thirty to one thirty or something like that. So I thought, okay, he's gonna play build a fire. Still build a fire. That was the single that was out that Jimmy was gonna do. And I went back to New York from Nashville. I stayed in Nashville for five days. I've been out in LA where I am now for most of the pandemic. So I got a call. Um, from the Tonight Show, and they were like, oh, Jimmy's going to do this. Luckily, I was in New York, because he was like, he's going to do this thing on Goodbye to you, this parody of Goodbye to You to Trump. Do you want to come do it? I'm like, yeah, okay. And I thought I was going to have to do it Zoom or something. And then they're like, well, you can go up to the studio, just have to do a COVID test, blah, 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 this and that. So, I mean, it was hilariously fun. And I know Jimmy a little bit, and he's a great guy. And I was... I was just so happy that he was doing my live song of Build a Fire at the end of the song. Build a Fire from her new album, It's About Time. Here's Patty Smythe. I felt like that was really wonderful of him to, to do that. I'm not exactly his demographic, you know, but I think he's a fan. So 
we came out, I came out and when we ran through it at the rehearsal, I was like, I said to the Roots, I'm like, which one of you guys is playing guitar? And I was like, and he raised it. I'm like, you got to crank it up, man. You got to play that guitar. <laughs> I mean, you got to chum, 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 chum. And he was like, okay. So we then, and then I just came out and it was just hilarious because it was really fun. That's what I'm saying. Even you can tell, it's like not an angry song for me. It's a funny song. And I was so happy to be standing there singing that. Jimmy kept sending me emails after he's like, the spin you did, like, cause I, he was, I guess he watched it a couple of times and I was hilariously. You know, and then I backed out of the studio singing goodbye to you to him. I mean, we, I was just messing around. So it was, it was a really fun. I'm so happy I got to do it. And I'm happy that we won that week too. I mean, we, he was first in the week of the late night, you know, uh, parodies on, on uh, Don being gone, Don being gone. So that was cool to make it to do number one, to help him do that. I was, I felt happy. What an opportunity because such a large audience. It was a huge opportunity. I know I was so grateful for it. Such a classic song. It just shows how much the song still means to people. It makes people happy. You see people just start jumping up and, you know, when I do it live, I'm like, if you guys are not going to dance with me, then I'm not going to dance. And sometimes I just stop. I'm like, get up and let's all just go crazy. Because I need that to get myself through that. You know, I'm, that's, a, that's a song where I'm jumping around for a good four and a half minutes straight, you know? singing at the top of my lungs. So I make the audience help me. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Leave us a comment about Patti Smythe. Share a memory about the song and make sure to subscribe to join our music community below to get more content. Again, look at our Patreon link. And to get Patti Smythe's new album, It's About Time, Click on the Amazon link below. You're not going to want to miss this. It's really great. Help us keep the music alive over here. Till next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Yeah.